Magandang araw, April and Marcus po, ang inyong pretty ate sa EdTech Unit. Alam ba ninyo na may webinar o online training session ng EdTech Unit tuwing Sabado? Ang araw na ito ay nakalaan para sa ating mga mahal na kaguruan upang turuan sila ng mga bagong kaalaman at kakayahan sa paggamit ng mga bagong software at applications para sa pinaka-epektibong paraan at lubos mapagkusay ang kanilang paraan ng pagtuturo. This is also a refresher session for our beloved teachers to enhance their skills in technology. Every Saturday, we will conduct webinar sessions for teachers about the use, advantages, and relevance of different blended learning software applications. Ang webinar seryang ito ay magsisimula ng alas 9 ng umaga hanggang alas 12 ng tanghali para sa morning session. Magsisimula naman ng alauna at magtatapos ng alas 4 ng hapon ang afternoon session. You can watch us in our DepEd EdTech Unit Facebook page, Educational Technology Unit YouTube channel, DepEd Tayo and DepEd Philippines. Kita-kits tayo tuwing Sabado! Magandang araw, Sir Wilbur po, at your service. Narito ang itulay upang gabayan ka sa inyong pag-aaral upang lubos na maunawaan ang iba't ibang paksa o subject. Ang itulay ay isang free online tutorial class na pinangungunahan ng ICTS Educational Technology Unit sa pumumuno ni Undersecretary Alain Del B. Pasqua. Ang programang ito ay hindi lamang para sa mga bata, kundi ito rin ay magsisilbing gabay sa mga magulang at mga guro kung paano nila ituturo o gagabayan sa bawat asignatura ang kanilang mga anak o mga estudyante. Sa kasalukuyan, ang self-learning module mula sa regyon ng Calabarzon at kilala sa tawag na pivot ang ginagamit sa ating itulay online class. Kaya ano pang hinihintay ninyo? Ihanda na ang inyong mga ballpen o lapis, papel o kwaderno at samahan kaming itulay ang pagkatuto para sa bawat batang Pilipino. Sama-sama tayong magtutulungan para malampasan ang mga hamon sa panahong ito. Halina't matuto kasama ang inyong online tutor sa oras na ito. Hello, good afternoon to all the parents, teachers, and learners all over the Philippines watching us live through Deped EdTech Unit, Deped Tayo, Deped Philippines Facebook pages, and Deped TV official YouTube channel. We are on the second week of English for Quarter 4, so be ready with your modules, pen, paper, pencil as we journey in the amazing world of English 4. And as we go on with our tutorial this afternoon, you can also comment your answers for the activities in the comment section below. All right, so let me go ahead and read uh, some of the comments here. The first one to comment for this afternoon is uh, Timothy Joseph Martinez. Uh, good afternoon, po, tutor, uh, watching from Baleti Sur. Elementary school. Hello, hello. And uh, of course, we want to say hi to Jessery Vito. Good afternoon. Uh, good afternoon as well to John um, Lacre, also here in the uh, comment section. We actually have a lot of people in here. Uh, we. I also want to say hi to, all right, uh, Lexer Javier, Kyle Mirasol, Ayan Punsalan. Hello, hello, Kyle. Uh, Mirasol, the, the, I've already mentioned you uh, earlier. Ayesha Alonso, hello. Uh, Zai Rivera, okay. Uh, once again with us uh, here this afternoon, Lance Ezekiel de la Cruz. Again, I want to say good afternoon and thank you so much for tuning in to our tutorial session for this afternoon. Okay, sige. So let's proceed with our class right now. So once again, um, my name is Sir Almir Sazervi de Kenya, and you can actually call me Sir Ace or Tutor Ace, okay? And like I mentioned earlier, we are now into the second week of the fourth quarter. And this afternoon, we are going to learn how to distinguish among the types of journalistic writing. Okay, sigue. So uh, what we're expecting um, at, the, at the end of this module you should be able to distinguish, malalaman mo yung pagkakaiba among the different types of journalistic writing. Uh, can you still remember our class last time? You know, we learned about the different features, mga iba't ibang kakangian 
ng journalistic writing. And from that, if you can remember, we actually learned about um, about the headline, the uh, introduction, the body, and the conclusion. And also, we uh, we we learned how to distinguish. Paano natin malalaman na, uy, ito pala ay journalistic writing, ito pala ay uh, fiction, parang ganon. All right? So once again, uh, I want to say, uh, hello, hello. Nice to meet you, Sir Ace. Thank you, Ayesha. Samantha Yunis, hello as well. Ruth and Vega from Maligaya Elementary School. Hello, hello. And Alexander Distor and Reveri uh, Isley. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing this one right, but thank you so much for tuning in to our e 2 session for this afternoon. Now, uh, as what we've done uh, previously, I'm going to be giving you a couple of questions here. And um, like I said uh, before, uh, we, we do this just to check kung ano ba yung nalalaman natin, especially when it comes to journalism. Okay, so I have here the directions. Uh, read the report. Okay, read the report, then answer the questions that follow. Okay, that's what we're going to be doing this afternoon. All right, so babasahin ko yung report. And uh, just like uh, what we did before, uh, as I would very much want to encourage you to do this, uh, let's follow the TikTok thing wherein we try and read uh, a news article or uh, a script, for example. Okay, so I want you to do that sa, uh, sa sa inyong mga pamamahay, or wherever you are right now watching uh, our e session for this afternoon. All right, so here goes our news report, okay? So good afternoon to all our radio listeners. This is Mark Flores for the Weather News. A powerful typhoon will enter the Philippine area of responsibility on Monday, June 15. Pagasa said Typhoon Pablo will pass through parts of Visayas and Mindanao tomorrow at 8 o'clock in the morning and will possibly leave the country on Tuesday evening. According to Pagasa, Typhoon Pablo is a signal number two typhoon. Classes from preschool to secondary levels will be suspended in all affected areas. Alert is up for all those living near rivers and coastal areas. Evacuation is advised to those in the danger zones because of possible floods and landslides due to the amount of water Typhoon Pablo is set to release. Okay, Sige, that's our news article for this afternoon. And I have here with me a couple of questions for you. Okay, the first question is, all right. So, uh, all right. The first question is, who is giving the news report? Okay. So you have the options there uh, flashed on your screen. Letter A, Henry Reyes. Letter B, Mark Flores. Letter C, Robert Flores. And letter D, Mark Fernandez. Okay. If you can recall uh, the, the news article na binasa natin earlier, who was or who gave the news report? Okay, Nigel Sapon, Micah Mariel Bernardo, letter B, Maria Jan Janine Ubak. I hope I'm pronouncing this one right. You are correct. The answer is letter B, and that is Mark Flores. Very good. Galing galing ng mga participants natin ngayon. Number two, question for you. Okay, what is the news report about? Okay, so the, the options are actually flashed on your screens right now. Is it the price of essential goods? Is it suspension of classes? Is it about the powerful typhoon? Or is it about the evacuation of residents? Again, patungkol sa ano yung binasa natin na report. All right, you have the options there uh, on your screen right now. And I have here answers from Lexi, Lexer Javier, uh, Lance Ezekiel de la Cruz, you're correct. Kylie Aliwalas, very good. The answer is letter C. Okay, it's all about the powerful typhoon that will enter the Philippine area. Very good. All right, number three. When will the typhoon enter the country? Okay, again, question number three is, when will the typhoon enter the country? Kailan kaya papasok? Is it Monday, June 27, Saturday, June 22, Tuesday, May 25, or Monday, June 15? Let's check if, uh, tignan natin yung mga retention skills ng mga kabataan natin ngayon. All right. Okay. So here we have answers uh, from uh, Nigel Sapon. Complete. All right. Bilis mag-type nito. All right. The answer is correct. Monday. Letter D. Monday, June 15. Okay. Lexer Javier, very good as well. Rosalind Bautista also got the correct answer. Chris 
Dalit, Alexander Distor, Zian Zian. All right, dalawang Zian to ah. Also got the correct answer. Ayesha Alonso also got the correct answer. Okay. All right, next question. Number four, where will the typhoon hit? Again, where will the typhoon hit? San kaya tatama yung bagyo? San dadaan yung bagyo? Ano yung mga lugar na maaapektuhan ito? Okay. Is it Luzon, parts of Visayas, Greater Manila area, or is it going to be Southern Mindanao? Okay. All right. I'm waiting on your answers right now. Again, where will the typhoon hit? Okay. We have the options on screen. Okay. Josh Lacre answered letter B. Um, Mika Mariel Bernardo also answered letter B. Okay. All right. Shaima Gablines also answered letter B. All right. The correct answer uh, for uh, item number four is definitely letter B, parts of Visayas and Mindanao. Very good. All right. So let's proceed with question number five. Question number five is, what will be the effect of the typhoon in the affected area? Okay. Again, question number five, what will be the effect of the typhoon? In the affected area, ano kaya yung pinoproject na posibleng mangyari based sa ating report? Okay, you have the options there on screen. Uh, number one, or letter A, closure of water parks, mga resort, masasara. Letter B, price increase on essential goods. Letter C, possible floods and landslides. And letter D, suspension of classes for college students. Okay, so I'm waiting for your... Uh, uh, for your answers, I'm checking the comment section right now. Catherine Agonia answered letter C. Possible floods and landslides. Micah Bernardo also answered letter C. Okay, Hazel Maria Ligaya realized her mistake and said C popala. Very good for realizing that one. All right, the correct answer is definitely letter C. Okay, nakabawe. Perfect. All right, number six. Why do you think? Okay, why do you think is there a need to suspend classes from preschool to secondary levels? Again, number six, why do you think is there a need to suspend classes from preschool to secondary levels? What is the correct answer in this one? Okay, we have the options flash on the screen. Letter A, to ensure that students finish their work on time. Yan ba yung reason kung bakit magkakaroon tayo ng class suspension? Or letter B, for everyone's safety. Or letter C, this is also good, to encourage family bonding. And letter D, for students to keep track of the typhoon. What do you think is the correct answer for number six? Bucket metal, suspension of classes. All right, I'm uh, seeing answers right now from our comment section. Kylie Aliwalas answered letter B. For everyone's safety, Camille Hernandez also answered letter B. And Ayesha Alonso answered letter B. And the correct answer for, for number six is definitely letter B. And that's for everyone's safety. Okay, very good. And we are down to our last question. All right, like I mentioned, uh, this part right here, I'm not really expecting you to uh, get the right answers, but I want you to try, nevertheless. Okay, number seven, what type of writing is this report? Okay. So yung report ni Mark Flores kanina, what type of writing was that? Letter A, is that news? Letter B, opinion. Letter C, sports. Or letter D, feature. What do you think is the correct answer for number seven? Okay. Shaima, uh, Shaima Gablines, A po, tutor. All right. Garnet Labang, letter A. Samantha Eunice Karaan, also letter A. Zian, also answered letter A for number seven. And you are all correct. That type of writing is actually an example of a news. Okay, so uh, so uh, how many correct answers did you get? I want you to comment um, the, the number of correct answers that you got. All right, so job well done, everyone. All right, sige, sige. So I have here another activity for you, okay? And I have the instructions on screen as well. Okay, another activity. The direction is, okay, let me uh, go ahead and check the comments right now. Okay, very good. Um, Micah got 7 over 7. Raveri Isle got, also got 7 over 7. A perfect score. Samantha, that's okay. Uh, like I said, uh, we're, we're just trying to check what you know. Malalaman at malalaman din natin yan. We will be experts later on pagkatapos ng ating session. Okay, Lexer Javier also got a perfect score. Okay, all right. So let's proceed with our next activity then. Okay, so here is the direction. Uh, it's already flashed. Say, new screens right now, tablets or phones or what have you. The direction is 
which sources of information is being described. Okay, write your answer in your activity notebook, or in our case, I want you to write your answers on uh, on the comment section right there. Okay, so, all right, so I just want to say hi to Arya Novella, uh, watching from Bliss Elementary School. Okay, so let's proceed. So, the young options that then we have news, we have books, and we also have the dictionary. So we only have three uh, three options right here. Okay, number one. Ben is trying to look for the definition of catastrophe, okay? What source should Ben use? Again, Ben is trying to look for the definition of catastrophe. What source should Ben use? Should he be using uh, a news article? Hahanapin niya sa books? Or more specifically, hahanapin niya sa dictionary? The correct answer is, all right, I think I was able to see a correct answer here. Uh, I hope I'm pronouncing this way, uh, this one right. Sid or S Sid Johans de la Cruz got the correct answer. Very good. Chris Dalit also answered dictionary. Okay. Mika also answered dictionary. And of course, if we're looking for the definition of a word, we're supposed to go to uh, or to look for that in the dictionary. Well done, everyone. Okay. So let's proceed to number two. Number two, it is a medium of for recording rather, uh, again, it is a medium for rec recording information in the form of writing or images, typically typically composed of many pages bound together and protected by a cover. What is the correct answer for number two? First one to answer, we have Chino Jaime Samonte who answered books. Okay, Mika also answered books. Princess Dizon also answered book. And the correct answer is? Yes, you are correct. The answer is definitely books. Okay, so let's proceed to number three. Although this one right here is a, a no-brainer. Because But nevertheless, a source of information where we can see headlines. Yung uh, lecture natin or yung discussion natin ng last, meron tayong headlines. Add to that, dito din natin makikita yung obituaries. Dito din yung editorial, okay? So that is, you're correct, everyone. That is news, okay? Mika Venturazana uh, answered news. Venus also answered news. Very good. All right. So I think we are all set, okay? So uh, eto, medyo, ma, medyo may babasahing article sayo ngayon, okay? So I have here, this one is a very interesting article. Um, I, I would like you to take note of the important details here, okay? So I'm going to read this one, and then we're gonna, uh, I'm going to be asking you a couple of questions after this. Okay, our first news report. Sorry, let me rephrase that. Our first article that we're going to read is entitled Fast Food. Okay, so let's read that. I want you to uh, read well uh, in your homes as well or wherever you are right now. Okay, so we can practice those speaking skills as well. All right, fast food may taste good, but it is not good for you. You should not eat it very often. This food does not have the vitamins and nutrients that you need. Healthy food will help you, help you grow strong and healthy. There are extra calories and fat in fast food. Fast food restaurants also give you servings that are too big. Every once in a while, it is fun to go out and have a fast food meal. In order to stay healthy, these meals should not be eaten all the time. Choose healthier food to keep a healthy diet. Okay, so that's our first article uh, in this particular section of our class or portion of our class. Number one, what is the title of the article? All right, so I'll be waiting for your comments here. Again, very simple question. What is the title of the article? Okay, hello, Ayesha, watching from Tagaytay Sungai Elementary School, Division of Cavite. All right, again, what is the title of the article? Number one. Uh, Gian Paolo Lucas answered fast food. Very good. Mika Bernardo also answered fast food. All right. Vian uh, Angeles also answered fast food. Very good. Okay, you are correct. The answer for number one is fast food. Number two, what is the opinion of the writer about his article? Okay. Ano ba yung gusto niyang ipahiwating? What was his message? Uh, we, we should be able to answer this uh, by using a phrase or maybe a sentence. Kaya na natin tong ma-explain kung ano talaga yung gusto niyang mangyari or ano yung opinion niya. Okay? Sige nga. 
Uh, I'm going to be waiting for your answers in the comment section. Let's try to check. Okay, Garnet Labang said, fast food is not healthy for us. Okay, take note, your answers might uh, differ, and that's that's perfectly fine. Okay, next, Kenneth Toledana, fast food is bad uh, if you eat it often. Okay, masama da yung fast food. Okay lang yung fast food, pero uh, wag uh, palagi, wag, wag kainin palagi, parang ganun. All right, very good. The correct answer, in my case, I answered limit fast food intake. Pag sinabi natin limit, pa konti konti lang. Not, not necessarily na uh, almost every day kakain ka ng fast food. And never, uh, and uh, masasabi din natin na ibig sabihin nito is fast food is not really healthy. Okay, very good. Okay, number three, what do you think? What type of journalistic writing is the article? We only have two options there. Do you think it's an opinion or is it news? Again, number three, what type of journalistic writing is the article? Is it opinion or news? Okay, what do you think? Okay, I'm still seeing comments from the previous question, but here we go. First one to answer, Samantha Karaan answered opinion. Uh, Said or Sid? Also answered the opinion. Very good. Arya Novella also answered opinion. And you are all correct. That type of news article is opinion. Okay. Later on, we're going to get to know kung bakit naging opinion yan. Okay. I have here another uh, another uh, article that we are going to read. Okay. All together. A loud crash was heard Friday morning at the gates of Kalam Primary School. The accident uh, between a school bus and a car belonging to a parent happened in the midst of morning rush hour. Okay, that's our that's our article. Uh, just just a very short article at that. Number four question: What is the news report all about? Sige nga. Okay, patungkol saan yung binasa nating uh, report? All right. Hello, hello, everyone watching from uh, Julian Castro. Also watching from Bliss Elementary School. Okay. Again, number four question: What is the news report about? Okay. All right. Ivan, number uh, patron. Uh, okay, opinion. Th this is uh, from a previous question, but here we go. We have an answer from Chris Dalit. Okay, it's all about an accident. You are correct. More specifically, Kylie Eliwalas answered about a car accident, uh, about a car and bus crash um, beside the school. Okay, a bus crash on Friday. Okay, you are correct. The answer that I have here is accident between a school bus and a car. Okay, there you go. Very well done, everyone. Ang galing nyo sa, 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 sa pag, uh, take note ng information sa mga binasa natin. Number five, when did the accident happen? I think I was able to uh, see an answer here. Supposedly for a previous question, pero meron ng date. So the correct answer for number five is yes, that is Friday morning. Okay, very good. Okay, now number six question is, what type of journalistic writing is this article? Again, kung kanina yung uh, article na binasa natin is an opinion, this one right here, what type of journalistic writing is it? Okay, is it news or is it feature? What do you think? Okay, sige. Destin Cano Padlan answered news. Okay, Chino Samonte also answered news. Very good. Vian Angeles, uh, Kian Anthony Nostra also answered news. Well done, everyone, because the correct answer is definitely news. Okay, all right. Seeking it, and we are, um, we will proceed with the next article. Like I said earlier, medyo maramirami tayong babasayang ngayon. Okay, this article right here, I'll start right now. Basketball is a team sport in which two teams, most commonly five players each, opposing one another on a rectangular court, compete with the primary objective of shooting the ball through the defender's hoop. It is a very popular sport worldwide, played with a round and usually orange-brown ball that bounces. Basketball players mainly use skills su such as dribbling, shooting, running, and jumping. Okay. Sige. What kind of sports is mentioned in this article? Tayo mga Filipino, talagang mahilig tayo nito. Okay, again, number seven, what kind of sports is mentioned in this article? All right? Okay. All right. Sige. Okay, Josh Lacre, Dion, uh, answered basketball. Samantha, Samantha, Eunice, Karan, also answered basketball. Timothy, Martinez, basketball, very good. You're all correct. The answer is definitely basketball. And number eight, 
what type of journalistic writing talks about sports? Okay, we already had opinion earlier. We already had news. And the most recent one, yung uh, kakabasa lang natin, what type of news, I'm sorry, what type of writing is that? Okay, is it opinion or is it sports? Okay, Josh answered sports. Reveri also answered sports. Okay, very good. Okay, number eight, Sid also answered sports. And number eight, the answer is definitely sports. Okay, sige. Now, we are down to our last article na i-identify natin kung anong uri ng, uh, ng, ng writing ito, ng journalistic writing. I'll read. Uh, this one comes from the Wall Street Journal. Okay, dear reader. On a beautiful late spring afternoon, 25 years ago, two young men graduated from the same college. They were very much alike, these two young men. Both had been better than average students. Both were personable, and both, as young college graduates, are or were filled with ambitious dreams for the future. Recently, these men returned to their college for their 25th reunion. They were still very much alike. Both were happily married. Both had three children, and both, it turned out, had gone to work for the same Midwestern manufacturing company after graduation and were still there. But there was a difference. One of the men was manager of a small department of that company, and the other was its president. Okay, sige, yan yung article natin. Number nine question, who are being compared in the article? Okay, so... Um, I'll, Okay, so the uh, I know that this might take some time for you to answer, but uh, let me just go ahead and proceed here. Uh, who are being compared in the article? Uh, we are comparing the two young men, okay, uh, who graduated from the same college. Okay, Vian was able to answer two men, specifically two young men who graduated from the same college. Okay, last question. What type of journalistic writing is this article? Is it news or is it feature? Again? Uh, Kanina, we already had opinion, we already had news, we already had sports. Right now, what type of journalistic writing is this? Is it news or is it feature? What do you think is the correct answer for number 10? Okay, Vian Angeles answered feature. Kyle also answered feature. Dion answered feature. Ayesha with a question mark. Feature, let me assure you, Ayesha, that you've got the correct answer. It definitely is a feature article. Okay, because right now, this afternoon, we are going to learn about the different types of journalistic writing. And we will identify kung ano, -ano ba yung mga uh, characteristic ng, uh, ng bawat isa. Okay, let's start with the news, my dear students. Pag sinabi natin news, it's any information on a current event or unusual situation that has meaning to a set of readers. Okay, that's our definition for news. And remember, whenever we make a news report, we must include answers to WH questions such as who, what, where, when, why, and how. Okay, so once again, news, it's all about something current. It's all about something unusual, something that is important sa, sa, sa isang uh, set, uh, set of audience or audiences. Okay, sige. Now, as what we have uh, read earlier about the crash uh, between a school bus and a car, that is an example of a news. We have here answers to, uh, to the WH questions, like say, for example, what? Anong nangyari? When? Okay, Friday morning. Who? Sino-sino uh, ba yung involved? All right? So yun, doon natin malalaman isang news article pala yun. Okay? So let's proceed uh, to, to feature, uh, feature report. Okay. Now, mind you, my dear students, pag sinabi natin feature, it's not really meant to deliver the news firsthand. Uh, ibig sabihin, maaaring nangyari na tong uh, pangyayaring ito a week ago, and then doon pa lang natin gagawa ng isang report. Not necessarily na right then and there. Okay, itong feature article na, na, na sinasabi natin. Okay, again, remember, it's not really meant to deliver the news firsthand, but meron silang mga uh, katangian the same or elements the same to that of a news. And their main function, my dear learners, is to humanize, add color, entertain, illuminate. Now, let me proceed with the example earlier, yung tungkol sa, sa two young men na binasa natin, okay? So, um... Meron tayong mga words such as 
beautiful spring afternoon. Okay, hindi natin makikita yan sa mga news articles. We have the words happily married. Okay, pag news article kasi, uh, straight to the point eh. Kung ano yung nangyari, wala nang cheche bureche. Itong yung, ito yung feature article, meron itong mga words na uh, the, the purpose of which is to entertain, illuminate, add color. So doon natin malalaman ay isang feature article pala yan. Okay, so medyo bilis-bilas na natin, my dear learners. Okay, opinion? Okay. All right. So pag sinabi naman nating opinion, it's a piece of writing that expresses personal belief. Matatandaan nyo lang yung word na personal belief. So kung sino may nagsusulat, meron siyang paninindigan na maaaring hindi ka agree or possibly namang agree ka sa isang uh, sa, sa kanyang uh, stand, so to speak. Now, paano natin malalaman or ano yung purpose nito? It's meant to convince readers. Pag ikaw nagbabasa, pag sinabi ko sa iyo, nakakasama yung fast food. So that's my opinion and I want to convince you na masama talaga yung fast food pag uh, pagparati natin itong kinakain. All right? Now, malalaman natin na isang opinion ito because we have sample opinion statements such as in my opinion, I feel that, I prefer and so on and so forth as what's being flashed on your screen right there. So earlier, nabasa na natin fast food, di ba? So that was meant to convince you na mas nakakasama yung fast food pag uh, pag not taken moderately or not eaten moderately. Okay, next, and the last one that we have is sports. It is one of the most interesting aspects of the noble profession, which is journalism, okay? All right, so it covers news like basketball or volleyball, sports. And be your favorite sports, no, I want you to comment that one, uh, uh, th that below, all right? It helps brighten up the sports page. So just like the article that we read earlier, it's all about basketball, and there's a uh, a page for that and a and a special type of writing, kumbaga, uh, in order to uh, to to relate uh, sports events sa mga nagbabasa. Okay, so very simple. Those are the characteristics. Okay, Timothy. Timothy's uh, fa favorite uh, sport is basketball. Princess loves badminton. Hazel loves volleyball. All right. Mika also loves badminton. All right, very good. All right, sige, mag-proceed na tayo. Direction. Ito, madali lang to. Check the proper column into what journalistic writing is described. Okay, number one. Number one, expresses the personal belief of the writer about timely issues. Again, I would like you to focus on the words personal belief. Dun, dun pa lamang malalaman na natin kung ano to. Is it news, opinion, feature, or sports? Personal belief, everyone. The correct answer is... Okay, Maria answered Quidditch. Maria, I believe, is a Potterhead. Mahilig to sa Harry Potter si, si Maria. Okay, <laughs> sige. Kenneth answered opinion. You are correct. Answer for number one is definitely opinion. Okay, number two. It covers news like basketball or volleyball. Or volleyball story, sports editorial, and sports features. The correct answer for number two is, okay, siempre, that is sports. Okay, let's proceed. Number three, the main function is to humanize, add color, educate, entertain, and illuminate. Ano kaya to, my dear students? What is the correct answer here? Is it news, opinion, feature, or sports? Again, the words that we should uh, focus on um, are the words humanize, add color, educate, entertain. Okay, number three, the correct answer is definitely feature. Okay, sige. That is, all right, parang hindi lumalabas sa aking screen. Ha? Okay, there you go. The correct answer for number three is feature. Number four, inform the readers of what is happening in the world around them. Okay, what do you think? Okay, again, number four, uh, the purpose of this one is to inform the readers of what is happening in the world around them. The correct answer is Kian in Ostro. You are correct. Answer for number four is news. Okay, uh, okay, Lexer also answered news. Very good. Number five, last item. Uh, it's new information on a current event or unusual situation that has meaning to a set of readers. Okay? All right, again, the words, I'd like you to focus on the words current event, unusual situation, and meaning to a set of readers. The correct answer for number five, it's still, okay? 
Is it news, opinion, features, sports? Again, number five, it's about current events. Okay, nangyari ngayon. Binalita ngayon. Parang ganon. Okay? It has meaning to a certain set of readers. Yes, you are correct. Shai Magablines. The answer is still news. Okay, there you go. Okay, sige. Let me go ahead and try to check. All right? So I have here another uh, uh, another assessment for you, another test. Tingnan natin. All right, so. All right, sige. Sorry about that. So we have here another news article. So I'll be reading this one, and uh, just like uh, how we do it for for the past previous uh, uh, for for the previous articles, I want you to read uh, kung saan man kayo ngayon. Okay, two pupils receive rewards. Ana Gonzaga and Grace Ramos, both grade four pupils of Tandang Sora Elementary School, were awarded gold medalists for their honesty during the celebration of Buwan ng Wika. The said pupils returned a bag containing 10,000 pesos, a cell phone, and other valuable items to the principal's office. The bag, owned by an American tourist, Golda Prince, was left at the canteen when, when her group visited the school. The children found the bag and immediately bought it or brought it to the principal to help them find the owner. Miss Prince was very happy that her bag was returned and praised the children for their honesty. Okay, sige. All right, I have a couple of questions. Hopefully, you were able to take down uh, some important details. Okay, Samantha, tutor, na ulan po dito sa amen. Okay, oi, uh, dito dito sa amin sa negros. I'm not sure if you can see on the screen. Parang uh, uh, nagsisweat na si uh, tutor kasi masadong may init dito. Okay, <laughs> all right, sige. Number one, hopefully, okay lang kayo dyan. Number one, what is the news report about? Okay, we have the uh, options here on screen. Is it about an American tourist who owned the bag? Is it about the Bonang Wika? Or is it about the uh, two, two, the, uh, two pupils who received rewards? Or letter D, is it about the grade four pupils of Tandang Sona? What is the correct answer? Okay, Minda Parinha answered letter C. Nigel answered letter C. Um, okay, Jolan also answered letter C. And you're all correct. The answer is definitely letter C. Okay. Next, we have another news article. Uh, allow me to read that one for you, my dear students. My favorite sport, unquestionably, is swimming. I learned swimming when I was six years old, and my parents tell me that I took swimming like a fish takes to water. There are several reasons why I prefer swimming over all other sports. However, the topmost remains, my love for water. Besides, Swimming does not require expensive gear, a swimsuit, and a pair of waterproof goggles, and you are set to swim. Okay, question number two. What type of journalistic writing is this? Letter A. Okay, is it news? Letter B. Is it opinion? Letter C. Is it feature? Letter D. Sports. Okay, all right, let's check. Number two, what type of journalistic writing was that? Okay, it's all about uh, swimming. Okay, that's a no-brainer. The answer is VN, answer letter D, Nigel, sports. Ayasha Mendoza also answered letter D, sports. You are all correct because letter D is definitely the, uh, the correct answer. Okay, let's proceed to, uh, let's proceed to another article. Okay, why summer is the best season? Have you ever sat inside a cold, snowy day, counting down the days until summer? If so, you are like me who loves summer. There are many reasons why I like summer, and I think summer is the best season. Summer is a great time to play outside since it is warm outside. You can go swimming, play the park, and go to the beach. In summer, people get more exercise because they can go outside and be active. There are benefits to all of the seasons, but you can clearly see why I think summer is the best. Okay, number three. What do you think is the opinion of the writer why summer is the best season? Okay, we have the options flash on the screen. Is it gusto niya ba yung summer because actions are limited during this time? Is it letter B? There are benefits to all the seasons. Is that yun ba yung reason niya? Yun ba yung opinion niya? Or letter C, it is a great time to play outside since it is warm. Or letter D, 
If so, you're like me who loves summer. Okay, the correct answer here is letter. Okay, that is Samantha. Okay, with emojis right here, Lee, the answer is correct. Letter C, Donna also answered letter C, which is correct. Earnshill Keith Pasqua also got the correct answer. Timothy, Juana, Marquez, okay. All right, Sid also got the correct answer. All right, it's letter C. Very good. Well done, my dear students. And we are down to, I believe, is our last article for this afternoon. Okay, so let's read all together. My grandmother now has three teachers, one journalist who is also a published author, one accountant, and an engineer for her offspring. I regret missing the chance to witness the silent pride in her misty eyes as each one of her children walked across the stage to receive his or her hard-earned and well-deserved diploma. Yet, I can see her expressions vividly. Is it because of my mother's clear description when she recruited the f recounted sorry, the family struggles? No. I must have seen that look in my grandmother's eyes myself. It was last week when I told I was graduating as class valedictorian. Her response was simply to take me in her arms and whisper, keep up the tradition of academic excellence. Okay, so that's our last article. Okay. All right. So you go. Okay, I must have uh, skipped <laughs> a couple of slides. Number four question, what type of journalistic writing is this? Is it letter A, is it feature? Meron bang mga flowery words don? Was that meant to entertain, to add color? Or is it letter B, news, current event, okay? Is it about letter C or is it letter C, which is a personal belief? Or was it about sports? The correct answer is... Okay, John Paolo answered letter A. Lexer Javier Donna. Nigel also answered, okay, so good. All right. Janelle Gapasin answered feature. And the correct answer, okay, Ayesha uh, realized uh, that, that she might have typed the, uh, uh, the, the incorrect letter and changed that to letter A, which is feature. And my dear students, that is the correct answer for number four. That is feature. Okay, sige. So I have here a couple of words that I would like you to familiarize yourselves with. Ito yung mga words na ginamit natin sa ating discussion na posible, hindi nyo pa na, na encounter. Okay, so we have the words journalistic, which means things that have to do with writing or reporting about the news. But before I proceed with this one, I want you to comment your scores. Out of the four items that we... Uh, uh, we, we've recently answered, what was your score? Okay. Um, did you get a perfect score? Maybe a couple of mistakes along the way? Okay, Aryan Avella, shout out. There you go, Aryan, hello, hello. Thank you for watching. Okay, Micah got a perfect score. Very good, Micah. Okay, four over four, four out of four questions. All right, Nigel also got uh, the correct answer. Kyle, that's fine, that's perfectly fine, okay? Patuloy lang natin in practice and uh, identify uh, the, uh, the, the different features of these types of uh, journalistic writing and we will be able to master this one. Okay, four over four for Timothy, also got the correct, uh, or also got the perfect score. Okay, Samantha, that's perfectly fine. Practice pan practice. And like I said, we will be able to master the uh, yung yuma pinag aralan uh, pinag aarala aral pinag aarala natin ngayon. Parang naburul nabul nabulo si tutor don. <laughs> Alright, that was a challenge. Okay, Ian Ponzalan. Okay, very good. All right, so let me go back to the words that we are supposed to familiarize ourselves with. We have the words journalistic. As mentioned earlier, these are things that have to do with writing or reporting about the news. The next word is offspring. Pag sinabi natin offspring, that is the product of the reproductive processes of an animal or a plant. And we have the word tradition. Okay, the transmission of customs or beliefs from generation to generation are the facts of being passed on in this way. Okay, so well done, my dear students. Thank you, thank you for tuning in. Just wanna say congratulations, and thank you so much for tuning in once again to today's Itolai session. Of course, to all the parents, teachers, and learners all over the Philippines, watching us through Deped EdTech Unit, Deped Tayo, Deped Philippines Facebook pages, and Deped TV official YouTube channel. 
Thank you, thank you, Marina. Thank you, Tutor Ace. Thank you as well. Maria, Jillian, bye-bye. Thank you. See you next week for another uh, ETLI session for Grade 4 English, okay? Do not forget. Okay, keep tuning in and catch Tutor Mark for English 5. See you all again next Tuesday for English 4. This has been Sir Ace. Thank you, and God bless everyone. Stay safe. Sigurado ako na marami ka na namang natutuhan sa ating itulay tutorial session ngayong araw. Tandaan, ito ay hindi lamang para sa ating mga mag-aaral, kundi pati rin sa ating mga minamahal na guro at mga magulang na kaagapay natin para maituloy ang pagkatuto sa kabila ng nararanasang pandemya. Patuloy ding sumubaybay sa DepEd TV para sa mga araling ginawang video episodes. Mapapanood ito mula lunes hanggang sabado, alas 7 ng umaga hanggang alas 7 ng gabi sa inyong mga telebisyon. Abangan bukas mula alauna ng tanghali ang iba pang aralin sa ating Ito Live free online tutorial session sa Filipino. I-like and subscribe at manatiling nakasubaybay sa ating Ito Live tutorial session sa DepEd EdTech Unit FB page at Educational Technology Unit channel sa YouTube at sa DepEd Tayo at DepEd Philippines social media accounts. Paalam!